Coming up on Hands on Android, typing can be a little bit of a pain on a smartphone device, but Google's Gboard app has some tricks up its sleeve, and I'm gonna show you some of those next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Start solidifying your cybersecurity strategy with the award-winning LastPass today. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell and today I'm going to talk about one of the things I hate most of all on smartphones and that's typing. Typing long emails on a tiny little screen, it's just, it's painful no matter how you slice it. Thankfully, things have gotten a little easier over the years. Uh, there have been, you know, some new technologies that have been brought into the smartphone keyboard that have made it just a little bit less painful. And Google's Gboard does a really great job of that, I think. Uh, I've gotten really used to the swiping capability on the Gboard uh, app and just a whole lot of other things, including some of the AI smarts that are built into it. Anyways, some of these features are a little bit out of the way. They're a little bit hidden away and you might not even know that they're there. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of Gboard. Let's take a look. So let's start with a super quick one. Gboard is really great at knowing when to capitalize something for you. For instance, if I write simply a lowercase i, it's going to automatically capitalize for me when I hit the space bar. It's pretty standard stuff. But take twit. That's the word twit. It's a capital T, capital W, lowercase i, capital T. Kind of complicated. Doing this the old-fashioned way is a pain. It's filled with me pressing the shift key three different times, and then the letter, uh, and then, of course, not pressing it on the fourth letter. Suddenly, typing twit gets kind of time-consuming. Instead, I can actually drag from the shift button to the soon to be capitalized letter. I drag from shift to T and what is placed but a capital T. I do that for the T and the W, just tap the I without and then do the drag for the other T and problem solved. I have the complicated word twit spelled the way I like. Of course, perhaps the easier way to tackle the twit problem is this. The reason the all lowercase version of twit isn't autocorrected is because the all lowercase version of it is stored in my autocorrect database, apparently. So if I wanna remove anything from that database, I can simply type my word, then tap and hold on that word in the suggestions bar. When I do that, you'll see remove suggestion. I just drag up to that and let go. And now when I type the lowercase version, I'm gonna tap the properly capitalized version in the suggestions bar. This is basically telling it like, this is what I want you to do going forward. And from that point forward, when I type lowercase twit and hit space, it will autocorrect to the correctly capitalized version that's stored in my autocorrect database. Similar to what you saw with the I uh, a little bit earlier. Pretty neat. Now, glide typing is my preferred typing mechanism. It enables so much quick control over how I type on mobile. For example, check settings, then glide typing, and be sure to activate enable gesture delete. Now, when I want to delete a long string of words, all I have to do is tap and hold on that delete button and then swipe to the left. And as I do so, the cursor actually selects word by word backwards. And so I'm selecting what I want to delete. And when I release, that block will be cut completely. And the good news is, it's not the end of the world. If I make a big mistake by deleting it, I can just tap the clipboard button in the top row to paste it back in place. Now, another glide typing feature to be sure is enabled is enable gesture cursor control. And this is super easy. Just tap your finger on the space bar and then swipe left or right to move along the text that you've typed. It's kind of like a little, a little mouse that's embedded in the space bar. And that gives you directional control, but maybe you want even more directional control than just that. Enable the text editing shortcut. So when you're looking at the keyboard, tap the greater than symbol, uh, if you're not seeing this already in the top row, and then look for the three dots and tap those. 
This is a shortcuts menu for other functions. You can see a bunch of functions here. You can drag any one of these into that bar up top for quick access. So for now, let's just drag the text editing button up there. Now, when we go back out to our text and tap that button, what do you know? We get full directional controls and they're complete, you know, arrows in all directions. This includes one tap to copy, to cut, paste. You've got selection tools. And of course you have delete. Nice to have assigned to that top bar as well. So you have it at a moment's notice. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. IT leaders need to invest now in upgrading or adding security technologies that make remote work safer and more productive. LastPass is the best place to start. IT and security leaders will have the control they need from a central dashboard. They get access to security scores and dark web monitoring to see real-time readouts of your business's password hygiene and provide alerts to employees when credentials may be at risk. For every employee, you can view their password scores, gain access to shared accounts, monitor group memberships, and more. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Now, yes, there are emoji options that are accessible within the standard emoji button in Gboard, but what you get when you go there is well, everything. It's literally everything. <laughs> Sometimes I find it to be a bit of a crowded mess. Sure, search does help, but there's a way to give yourself a small sampling of your most used emoji with one tap. So let's tap the settings gear and then go into preferences and make sure to enable show emoji in symbols keyboard. And now when you're typing and you want that special emoji that you always use, just tap the symbols numbers layout button down below. And suddenly the very top row becomes a list of your top six most often used emoji. Quick access for the win. Apparently um, I like the sunglasses emoji a lot. All right, this next one is super dynamic and a big time saver. Let's say, well, you know, let's just say I work at a podcast network and uh, very often I want to type out the phrase podcasts you love by people you trust. Well, to type that out every time that takes time, right? Well, check this out. Open up Gboard settings and then go into dictionary and then personal dictionary. And then, of course, you want to select your language. I'll select English U.S. Now I'll tap the plus icon up top, and this is to add to this personal dictionary. And I'm going to type out my long phrase. The last time I'll have to type it out. Podcasts you love by people you trust. Now below that in the shortcut field, I'm just going to put in P-Y-L. And let's go back out to my doc now. Now, anytime I type in P-Y-L, my centered suggestion is the long string that I just entered into the personal dictionary. I just tap that string, that single button, and blammo, there it is in no time. I can do it over and over and over again if I like. You can see how this could easily become incredibly useful, and especially on tiny mobile screens. And finally, why bore yourself with a default theme when Gboard gives you options? Tap the three dots and then tap theme. Now here you can go to find a huge list of solid colors and gradients to paint your keyboard with, of course, kind of boring. There are some preset images that you can shine behind the keys with the ability to turn on keyboarders or not if you prefer. But finally, you can import any image that you wish into that keyboard area to really customize your keys the way you like. Now, I realize theming is nothing new, of course, but it's easy to use Gboard for years without realizing that they're hidden away where you'll never see them, which is exactly what I've done. So here you go. So there you have it, a few tips and tricks to help you use Gboard better. So hopefully typing isn't such a pain on that small smartphone screen. Uh, thankfully, there some of these advances really do help. And the more you use them, the more you get comfortable with them being there for you. Things like dragging from the space bar over for capitalization, things like tapping onto the delete and then scrolling backwards. There are things that the first couple of times you do it, it's going to take some remembering, but then it just kind of becomes your Kung Fu, right? Like your fingers just kind of go there as you're typing and you get a lot faster. So I hope that's helpful to you. Send me your emails, your tips, your tricks to 
the hands on Android at twit.tv. You can also hit our show page on the web, twit.tv slash HOA. There you can subscribe to the show in audio and video formats and jump out to YouTube to subscribe or watch there. We hope that you'll do that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.